Uh, one hand, we have temperatures in the low teens this morning. Let's bring in a guy who's passed the low teens many years ago along with me, Pat Pagano. Good morning, Pat. You got that right. Good morning. <laughs> and uh, that's not bad considering because um, uh, in the northeast corner of our state, we have temperatures right now in the middle single digits. Uh, it's 10 at Hartford. Uh, Willimantic's coming in with six above. We go north. And it's seven below in places like Keene, New Hampshire. How about that? It was ten. It was ten at my house this morning. It was ten at my house, but uh, but still, I mean, what the heck, you know? I mean, it's January, and it you know, middle part of the month, almost late month, so you have to expect a uh, cold. I'm not sure. Um, I, I got to take a look at that right now. But I thought, uh, and I may be wrong, but I thought we had predicted this. Let's see. This would be what? The third week of January. Icy cold and moderating with rain and or snow. And, 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 and that's the next thing we have to talk about. Right. The and uh, week. last week I have bone chilling cold. That's next week. We'll see about that. Uh, but in the meantime, tonight will be clear 10 to 15 again. And tomorrow, sunny night is cold 40. Sunny Thursday, mid 40s. Friday, sunny low 40s. Saturday. Still a tricky situation. Cloudy <laughs> skies, it really is. I'm looking for a wintry mix to arrive on Saturday. Now, will it stay a wintry mix uh, or will it go over to snow? Uh, my, my gut is telling me right now it could be very similar to last weekend. That's what it's telling me. And then it will move out Sunday morning and then a little bit of clearing Sunday afternoon. Uh, temps will continue to be above the average. Uh, the problem with that is, uh, you know, there's going to be two storms on the weekend, which there wasn't last weekend. Yeah. Last weekend was one storm that went up through the Great Lakes, period. Uh, this is going to be a low that gets to the Ohio Valley, transfers its energy to the coast, and it looks like the coastal low will hug the coast. And sometimes when it does that, it can do one of two things. It could either bring in enough mild air for us uh, to mix or go over the rain, or if it moves rapidly up along the coast, any mixed precip could go to snow. Uh, so there's still a number of ways that it could work out for us. And I think the further east you go, uh, the better chance you have of it being more liquid than snow. And north and west you go, the better chance you have of being Mainly snow and some sleet. You know, in Connecticut, the demarcation line, give or take 25 miles on each side, is I-84, really. Uh, most of the times with these coastal storms, where the changeover would begin, you know, at, with coastal storms, it, it just is. You know, the, when you go to the north of I-84, the north and west, you know, it's, it's, it seems if it's going to be snow, it's all snow, and you go south and east of I-84, and uh, they're the ones that get the turnover. So we'll see what happens, you know. What the heck? You think you think that's why they made um, I eighty four there because of the rain <laughs> snow line? Yeah. It's amazing how things like that uh, become demarcation zones. Yeah, zones. yeah. But it really does. That really does dissect uh, Connecticut in a way, from the highlands to the to the flatlands. Uh, that and just that's just just funny the way it work, it worked out. See in uh, Lake Placid, they were cutting the ice to build the the big ice castle they built up there. No. Uh, yeah. Yesterday, I guess in, in like eight or nine hours, they cut like three or four hundred blocks. Uh, yeah, they they build a big they have a big winter carnival up there and they cut the blocks out and uh, and then they they build a, a big ice castle. That's pretty cool. Uh, well, you'll never get me going there to visit because it's it's just, you know, too cold. For you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. guess I guess if I was, you know, I take that back. I guess I was wealthy. I'd go there and I'd stay. I'd see it for a hotel. I wouldn't go out to any activities, because you know you like that. You see, so you go out for a few minutes, and you see it. Oh, that's nice. Thank you very much. It was, I, I wasn't like. I'd like to go see the ski jumps, but you can see them in the summertime. You know, up there, you 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 can see them in the summertime. So, all right. Uh, yeah, but th that was that would be if I was wealthy and I didn't have to be at the radio station seven days a week. <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, I'm neither, but uh, doesn't interest me in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, I, I think you know, I, I think w winter festivals are nice, but they're nice to look at, and and maybe f having 
uh, a Bailey's Irish coffee and looking out of a bar at the activities. That's my, just like if you go, if you go watch, uh, uh, that's the nice thing I like about curling. The curling center up here, the Norfolk, Norfolk, Norfolk Curling Club, it's beautiful. They've got, uh, they've got curling and they've got a, a bar, a real nice restaurant like bar lounge. You can sit in the bar and lounge and look at them curling. And you're, hmm. you're in nice warm weather and you got a nice cocktail in your hand. I know um, they're uh, they're going to be holding the uh, ice fishing tournament up at our cabin, and it's scheduled for not this weekend but next weekend. Hopefully, they get us ice. Yeah. Uh, well, my friend David went up there early, uh, yesterday, and he said there was little of any ice on the lake at all. <laughs> so I don't know what they're going to be doing there. Uh, I mean, these last couple of days will probably bring some ice, but probably not. Only, only enough to hold a duck, if you know what I mean. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so I don't know what they're going to be doing there, but uh, I don't have any part of that, so I don't have to worry about it. Uh, a friend of mine, a good friend of mine who lives in uh, East Chester, uh, his mom passed away. So um, I have to get to the wake tonight, um, which is going to be a little bit rough for me because, uh, you know, my hours. But I have to get there tonight and then tomorrow. I have to get back down there for the mass and the burial. So um, that kind of um, that kind of put a whole uh, uh, clamp in in this week. You oh, know, yeah. unexpected. Uh, she was sick uh, for a little, for about a year now. Um, she had Alzheimer's, and um, she just progressed very rapidly, uh, more so than than normal. And um, a lovely woman, and she'll be missed. Well, you're having a lot of friends, people uh, pass away there. Yeah. Um, if you recall, right before, between Christmas and New Year's, my friend George's mom, yeah. who had Alzheimer's out on Long Island, she passed away. Um, she was 91. Um, Andy's mom, who passed away uh, the other day, was 83. But a very young-looking 83. In fact, prior to this, uh, she used to go out ballroom dancing at least once a week. Um, just a lovely, very, very charming woman. So I don't like it because mom used to tell me all the time, Pat, where there's two, there's three, no matter what you're talking about. <laughs> See, so you're, you're, you're I, right around my age, and it's the same thing. My grandmother used to say that about deaths. She used to say that about deer. If you're driving a car and you see one, there's two. If there's two, there's three. If there's three, there's four. If there's four, there's five. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. And also, famous people die in, in threes. Famous people die in threes. So if a famous person dies, you know two more are coming. <laughs> in other words, like a celebrity or something yeah, like that. Yeah. There are lots of rules my grandmother had. <laughs> yeah, they did, uh, you know. Back in the old day, but anyhow, I, so I certainly hope that's not true. Um, and that's it. Um, uh, you know, uh, everything else is relatively quiet. I mean, at least I don't have to worry about the weather through Friday. No, but already the the drums are beating at certain places. Oh, really? Where, yeah. they, where they show they show advanced radar and and the potential for some boom, 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 storm, storm, there storm. There we go. Yeah. It's the winter, for gosh sakes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, and you live in New England. What That's do you right. expect? That's right. Come on. Yeah, it's gonna really. snow. You know, sooner or later, you're going to get snow. Even if it's a warm winter, you're going to get bad weather. But it, it's the, the drums, boom, 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 really, because Febu TV. And you know, yeah, and you know as well as I do, February has the highest probability of nor'easters. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, we're going into a month now where where I'm sure it is going to be more stormy. Yeah. Well... Not yeah. st not stormy like the, the stormy with the president, but stormy with the weather. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, Pat, I just want you to know that uh, your efforts to keep us informed and insane in weather forecasting, we appreciate it because other than that, we're constantly bombarded with things. Really, warnings and this, you know, get your oh, supplies. Yeah. I, I know, I know. And right now there's nothing to... Uh, Nothing to worry about through Friday, so sit back and relax. And enjoy a cold week. That's it. Pat, you've done it again. <laughs> yeah. I'll speak to you tomorrow. All righty, Marshall. You take care. Take care, Pat. Bye-bye. All right.
Pat Vigano on the Weather Center this morning with a check on our tri-state forecast.